So welcome back to the build. Good news is I've got a new job. I'm no longer working 60 plus hours a week. I'm now working 38 hours a week. So we'll have more time to do a lot more of this. So unfortunately work on the wing has stalled. Bad. <laughs> uh, I've been spending a lot of time getting the engine up and running. Uh, I thought that was a bit of a concern um, just to not leave the engine mothballed. So um, let me show you the engine. All right, so here's the engine. I've just put it all on a super cheap, which is the brand, engine stand. Um, now the engine stand, it's the smaller of the two that super cheap auto sell. It's the 450 kilo one. Uh, I thought that shouldn't be a problem since the engine weighs probably a bit over 120 kilos. So what I've done is I've just used the mount that Viking made for me. All right, they pretty sure they went to velocity and sized it all up for me. So the mount is on it's on a firewall, which is basically just a pallet that I got from Bunnings uh, just chopped it in half and layered the two halves together so I didn't paint it this was already painted so yeah red's not my color um, now the intercooler so the first thing you notice is this big u-bend I don't like it it's um, it's terrible and it's going to be in the way, I'm sure. So what I'm planning on doing is putting a uh, probably just a two and a half uh, pipe, maybe an angle comes out here. Uh, I think that'll be pretty much all that's needed. We also might change the, the inlet to the intercooler to two and a half inches. So, interestingly, the throttle body here is two and a half inches, but around the other side, the turbo outlet here is two inches. So, we just run two inches all the way back around the back of the engine and into the intercooler, which I'm hoping it'll just be two and a half inches. I might buy another intercooler. These are just cheap Chinese ones. I'm not too concerned about it being Chinese. I think pretty much all the intercoolers and radiators in the world are made in China, so uh, that's just just what it is. So how the radiator, sorry, how the intercooler is mounted, uh, it's just mounted the, through these little things. These are just little steel bits I just made up. Uh, they're pretty strong, but they're a little bit they're a little bit springy. So I know Jan at Viking, he does a solid aluminium mounting system to the engine. Uh, I, might, I might do that, um, but this intercooler is a lot heavier than his, so um, it's a lot of weight to be swinging off a, off a vibrating engine, so I figured it just needs a little bit of uh, suspension kind of thing. I'll probably keep the rubber mounts. Um, I was just playing around with them to see if they would work and yeah they work fine okay so here's the radiator uh it's basically just the smallest cheapest one i could find uh it's not going to be mounted here on the plane obviously i don't think it'll fit i might mount it underneath i might be able to try and mount it off the firewall on a bit of an angle the same as the intercooler don't know so as for the fans uh, I've got a single, I think it's a 12 inch, might be a 10 inch fan on there. It's just the cheap Chinese ones. Uh, I do like the Spol fans. They're the low profile ones. They're a pretty good quality American made, I think. I'll probably go with them. I, you definitely need one on the radiator for idle and taxi. Um, there's also one on the intercooler. So that might be a bit of a hindrance when flying. Not sure, uh, through when taxiing, if long taxi, uh, you're doing run-up sort of tests, thrust tests, 
you know, or you just want to try and run the engine and see what happens, see how hot it gets uh, on the ground. So we'll probably keep a fan until until it's a problem, basically. If it's a real problem, we'll take it off. All right, so uh, this is the throttle system I've got. Um, now, I didn't get a throttle with, this, with the kit or the engine, so I just basically just made my own electronic one. Uh, it's just a, just a servo motor, just connected to, to the throttle arm. So it's, um, is it, has it got problems? Yeah, yeah, it works fine, but if any part of it fails, can it jam? And the answer is yes. Um, can jam? Can the servo jam? Yep. Can the servo melt? Yep. So will it? Don't know. Probably not. Um, just going to use it for testing. Uh, this is just a bit of a work in progress. So um, I'll just demonstrate it um, after I sort of explain how it's controlled. So over here, it's just controlled by a, a Duino unit. Um, yeah, doing your units just powered by this guy, so just off 5 volts. So this just takes 12 volt power and just converts it to 5. Nice and safe to run the Arduino. Uh, the servo motor is actually a 6 volt motor, so over here we've got a little 6 volt uh, step down uh, unit, just changes the, uh, the voltage for the servo. Um, this thing needs a little bit of code. Um, the code examples online are pretty simple. I've, I've had to beef them up. Um, when I was playing around with it, the, the servo would lose touch with what the uh, throttle controller was telling it. So in that process, I've just had to modify the code a little bit. Um, not a, really a problem. I'm pretty proficient at uh, software engineering, so it's kind of one of my things. Uh, now here, the we've just got a potentiometer on a knob here to control the throttle, so um, I'll just switch it on. So, so it's just controlled. Uh, get both of them in the shot. So it's pretty wide range of throttle movements there. So interestingly, the that noise that you hear, that's just the uh, servo for the uh, the wastegate on the turbo. It just it just moves with throttle. So uh, the ECU thinks the engine's running, so that's why it's just doing that. So. So yeah, there, there's a few things to work out. Okay, so I mean it all works. Uh, I've set the the full open position and the full closed position. Um, if I switch the whole thing off, it moves pretty easy. Like it's you know a normal manual throttle will be able to move it pretty easy. So we can run you know both a manual and a, and an automatic, not an automatic but a uh, electronic throttle. So the electronic throttle just gives me some more options later on. So, so I'll just move on to the electrics. Um, sorry, it looks a bit like a dog's breakfast, but uh, it's all pretty simple. So this is what um, Yarn at Viking sort of prescribes. And uh, yeah, you've, you've basically just got to wire your engine as per this wiring diagram. Um, that's just... Uh, Another example, just to help visualize what it looks like. So um, he runs a two battery system. So up here we're running off two switches. So both switches, okay. So uh, two fuel pumps, one pump, two pump. Okay, that, that was just the oil, sorry, the fuel pressure was a bit low. So the alarm went off, but We'll just turn them off. Alright, that's that's just the fuel pressure dropping that'll 
just switch that off. Um, so the engine starts. So interestingly, um, you should have both batteries on for start. So I'm going to do some improvements and use some extra relays. But what what you can do is you just you just wire in both switches to let you know that you can start if you like. Shut that alarm off. This one here is the alternator. Okay, so in a car, it's crazy that you could turn your alternator off, but you've got to be able to switch your engine off somehow. So uh, I'd love to convert all these switches into just one key switch. That would be awesome. But I think there's a good reason why yarn at Viking dictates that you must have like separate switches everywhere. So we will just run with that. So we'll move on to uh, this guy and uh, it's control box, this guy. So this is made by Just Race Parts. And I think what they do is they just um, repackage a very common um, sensor control package uh, sort of equipment. Um, so they've actually done it really well. So uh, this thing here is just a little remote thing for it just controls it and helps set, set it up um, it's actually very easy to set up very um, I won't say intuitive but once you read the instructions it's pretty good uh, it it has all the sensors that the Viking engine needs and a few more so um, an extra thing it's got is the exhaust gas temperature probe so it came with that, but Viking don't require you to look at that, and and also there's nowhere on the there's nowhere on the exhaust there to to mount an, an EGT probe. So I'm not going to go to the trouble of doing it. Um, now it does give you the option of a air intake temperature gauge or a transmission oil temperature gauge. So you have to choose one of them. So what I've done is I've chosen the air intake and forgotten about the transmission. But since Viking don't require you to monitor the engine temperature, I've just taken the engine temperature and I've just put it over here into the, um, into the uh, gearbox. So that'll be, uh, that'll be my oil temperature there and not the actual engine oil temperature. So I'll just discuss the, the gearbox. Now, the problem I'm gonna have is cooling this thing. So ordinarily, the big fan on the front of the engine will cool it, but in our case, the fan's gonna be blown the other way, so we won't have a, a big amount of air to blow on that gearbox. I don't know how bad it's gonna get. Um, when you think about the whole gearbox, it's basically just a big heat sink. Um, I think all this extra stuff here is is for you know, extra temperature control. Um, I can put some more heat sinks on. Um, might be able to just bolt them here on the flat bits. Maybe put one in there somehow and one in there and just um, bolt them down. Not not entirely sure yet. Um, the other option is we're going to try and get some airflow onto it so. We might be able to, in the bottom of the cowling, build a scoop, blows up through here, and then out where the uh, the prop shaft will come out. Um, that's a pretty involved thing, so yeah, not really looking forward to having to do that. If we can keep it cool with just some big um, heat sinks, finned heat sinks, so kind of like uh, something like that. So this one, this one I just found in a, a bin. I think, you know, it's just calling some MOSFETs there. I think it's an audio system or something like that. Um, I thought I could just maybe cut that up and maybe bolt it on. We'll see how it goes. So this is the fuel system. This is the Viking header tank system. So this is the new, um, and I can tell you for sure, this one is the prototype that they built. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. But um, this is all wired in as per Viking's recommendations. It's exactly how it should be. So we're not going to change it. Um, this little filter here, this is just how I filled it with fuel. So 
Um, so here's fuel from one tank, fuel from the other tank, both an in, a fuel in and a vent line. Two fuel pumps, okay, for redundancy and two for takeoff and two for landing. One for cruise, just in case one fails, I guess you can switch the other one. Uh, these are actually pretty good pumps, so I don't think they'll just fail. So um, there's actually a, a third line here. So this is just a, a pressure relief in case the fuel in the hose gets too high a pressure. There's a tiny, almost microscopic hole drilled in this guy, and it just runs back down into the tank to relieve any pressure in the hoses. So that just runs straight over uh, through a fuel filter and then into the high pressure pump. So that'll just squirt really high pressure fuel straight into the compressed cylinders. So just one more thing on the fuel. Um, because the fuel here is being pressurized and it's not being sucked into the engine, so what happens is it gets rid of the problem of boiling fuel in your fuel lines. So I think they call it vaporizing. So it doesn't it doesn't allow any fuel to vaporize before it gets to the engine. So um, on the ground, that's not a problem. But when you get to altitude, the boiling point of the petrol or the, the MO gas that you'll be using is, uh, is greatly reduced. So you can actually boil your fuel in the lines. And if that does happen, then your engine's going to stop. So I have got the engine started. Uh, I've got it running fine. It was running great. Uh, I left it running just to see if the heat builds up all right and the fans kick on. But to my surprise, as it got hotter, it started missing and I was, I was pretty concerned about that. So what happened was I, I sent Alyssa at Viking an email and asked her what the hell was going on. And she says, oh yeah, no, all good. So she just suggested a, um, a fix and, and the fix was... It's a pretty expensive fix, but she suggested I put a propeller on the engine and uh, that will alleviate the problem. So <laughs> uh, we're not going to do that just yet since I don't have 20 grand sitting around. So we're just going to not run the engine warm uh, until we get a prop on it. So um, yeah, apparently this, uh, this engine is tuned for a propeller. So yeah, who would have thought? You know, obviously I didn't. So um, she said it's just running a bit rich um, when, when the engine gets hotter. So that's just what it's programmed to do. So yeah, those guys know how to do it. So not me. So yeah. So that's the tour of the engine. So if you have any questions uh, about the engine or anything, I'm only too happy to answer them in the comment section. We're going to be adding uh, a few other little things. I've ordered some... PWMs to put on to control the fans. Uh, I thought they'd be better than just your standard relay switches. Um, yeah, so don't forget to subscribe. I could use the extra subscribers and uh, we'll see you later. Second attempt. Both batteries on, both fuel pumps on. Control, closed.